Well, Jeremy, experts say that America is going to be in a downward spiral if we don't change the direction we're going right now. So what's the largest problem you think we face as a nation? I think innovation, our ability for individuals and institutions to innovate, is our sort of serious uh, challenge. We sort of invented the automobile, the internet, rock and roll music. Uh, we've got to figure out how to innovate in order to make sure that uh, we're competitive. So how do we figure out how to innovate better to fix these problems? The Talent Initiative put financial resources from the private sector, not government, on the table and said any schools that are willing to innovate, there's some seed money to do that. Without that support, we would not have been able to implement New Tech Technology High School at Huntington North. New Tech High Schools are a small community of innovative teachers and students who collaborate on projects that address real world problems. We know in the world of work, we work in teams. We don't go to sort of English class, social studies and science and sort of study those things. In the real world, we work in teams with people to change and innovate and apply knowledge to solve problems. New Techs put kids in teams together with teachers so they integrate their content, they focus their instruction and learning at solving a problem, and they apply the Indiana instructional standards to do that. If we're going to keep that talent in Northeast Indiana and kids can innovate to be competitive, to achieve the American dream, then we have to be able to change and innovate. Without the talent initiative and the partnership that that represents between public and private, I'm not so sure we would have done that. That was just enough to get us to have the ability to make that change. So in Washington, people familiar with the Deficit Cutting Commission, $1.5 trillion they're supposed to cut in the next decade. I mean, that's a big feat. Do you think they can do it? You know, they, they, they have to. Uh, when we have deficits that high, we're not only threatening uh, our current economic competitiveness, we're threatening the American dream for our kids. And um, I hope that com commission can do that work. It's a responsibility our government has. You know, I've always been curious. How is it at the local level in our schools and at the state level we can balance our budgets? And that doesn't really translate inside uh, Washington, D.C. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But it's a moral question now um, because we're not, we can't mortgage the American dream on the backs of our kids. That's just wrong. We're not just talking about Huntington North High School. You have some experience overseas. Talk about your experience overseas a little bit, Jeremy. I've seen the effects firsthand of a failed state and how important our institutions are and how individuals make a difference. I, I saw that. I also realized what it meant when I sort of stepped into those armored trucks how much uh, I personally had to lose as a father, as a, as, a, as a human being. And it makes you focus on what you really believe in. And I believe in freedom. I believe in our kids and our future. And when I uh, was sort of put in that situation, it made me appreciate things a whole lot more. How do you take what you learn in Afghanistan, come back here, take that perspective over here? How do we tie all that together? This is all linked, you were telling me. In my personal opinion, walking in Afghanistan and also in the halls of Huntington North High School, I just feel that the future of our country is not solely dependent on our military power. Uh, that's been well established around the globe, and we have a first-rate armed services, and I'm proud of the service that I, my fellow veterans had and what we accomplished overseas. But our home institutions of education, of government, of innovation, the things we've talked about, uh, that, that is the real source of our strength over time. And I'm convinced that if we can innovate and, and be competitive, we'll have security at home and abroad. I saw 19 and 20 year old soldiers I served with over in Afghanistan that could think, could make decisions, uh, could apply their learning to a very complex situation. That sounds an awful lot like what I'm asking uh, 17 and 18 year olds to do in our high school. So I am eternally optimistic. Uh, that if we focus on what our strengths are in innovation and applying knowledge and education, um, I'm convinced that there is no challenge this country can't overcome. We need to get our confidence back. And I think that comes by people working together to solve problems locally that will affect us nationally. Anything that veterans should be worried about? From my perspective, most veterans believe in service. You know, this question of uh, veterans' benefits, and we're gonna, I believe I will be taken care of. My family was taken care of. I didn't have, always have to rely on the government for that. My, our community really stepped up and took care of us. But we'll, I don't have any concern that our veterans won't be taken care of. I think for most of us who have served, it's really not about us. That's not why we did it. We did it because we cared about this country deeply and were willing to go places and do things that we felt we needed to do to ensure our safety and security. Um, so I, on a Veterans Day like today, I contemplate a lot about you know, what it all means. And at the end of the day, I, I'm very proud of our service people and my fellow veterans and, 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 and stepping up generation to generation and defending America.